Today on MLB The Show 24, I'll be going over 10 position players who you need to trade for in your franchise modes. Earlier today, I did this exact same video, but with 10 pitchers who you need to trade for, and I'll leave the card at the top right of your screen if you would like to check that out. We're going to be going over more sleeper, under-the-radar types of players today rather than superstars. I'm not going to tell you to trade for the Mookie Betzes and the Ronald Acunas of the world, but rather, none of these guys are higher than 85 overall, but they develop very well in MLB The Show simulation, and this is backed up by science. I have done two separate five-year simulations and have determined that these guys are very good in MLB The Show sim. So much so that we're going to use the White Sox, who are the lowest ranked team in the entire game. They don't really have many trade assets to begin with, so I'm going to show you how easy it is to trade for all of these players by not giving up any big-time trade assets and still acquiring some great position players. I think the most important ratings to look for are certainly contact, along with whatever else you would value next, whether it's defense, speed, or power, but contact, I think, has to be your top focus. The first player we're going to look at is Bo Naylor, the young catcher with the Cleveland Guardians. He's only 24 years old. He's got B potential, but you really don't have to give up that much to get him. We're not giving up any big-time assets here, and we're getting a player in Bo Naylor who develops very well in this game. This first simulation, I think, is the floor for Bo Naylor, but it's still a really strong result. He's an 84 overall. He's still getting better. Pretty solid offensive production overall, but this would still be the low end of what you could get out of him. In the second simulation, he developed really well. He's an 89 overall with A potential, and look at some of the seasons he had. The 2027 season in particular, 293 average, OPS at 950, 39 home runs, and a war at 8.2. With him playing catcher, a very high positional value defensively, that's an MVP level season. He didn't win the award, but he probably should have. If you don't want to get Bo Naylor, I've got another good catching option for you with Ryan Jeffers from the Twins. He's a little bit more polished offensively, but he's also a little bit older. His trade value is pretty similar, being that he's a couple years older and a couple ratings higher than Bo Naylor. So in other words, you really don't have to give up a lot to get him, but I think it's going to be worth it because he progresses very well in this game as well. In the first simulation, he is an 88 overall. Great contact stats, pretty good power numbers, and defensively, no slouch either. Pretty good fielding ratings, pretty good arm strength ratings. He hits at least 260 every season. OPS in the 800s pretty consistently with some very high war numbers, including 7.2 this last season. In the second simulation, again, 88 overall, albeit he really did not develop very well against left-handed pitching. The offensive numbers are a little bit worse, but he hit at least 280 in each of the final three seasons. Consistent OPS above 800, war above five in each of the last three seasons. This is still a really, really great player who you'd be getting with Ryan Jeffers behind the plate. We've got a number of second basemen to talk about today, and we're going to pick on the Twins once again with Edward Julian, who I think probably might be the best player of this entire video. He develops insane in this game. He's an 82 overall. He's 24 years old. He mashes right-handed pitching. Isn't all that great against lefties, but he can get there. He can play pretty much every position other than shortstop and center field, and he has six years of team control left. Now, with him being 24 years old and really good, he's going to be a lot more expensive than some of the other guys we're going to go over today. you got to give up some good pieces, such as Dominic Fletcher and Yairo Uriarte, but I still think it's worth it because Edward Julian is a machine in this game. In this first simulation, he's only an 84 overall. The ratings don't look that much better than they were previously, but look at his stats. His numbers in this game are absurd. He hits generally in the high 200s to 300 pretty consistently. He can get his OPS into the thousands, but in the bare minimum, you should be looking at the 900s. He averaged a war of around five in the four full seasons he played in this first simulation, but he was even better in the second one. Again, only an 85 overall. Not going to jump off the page, but look at the numbers here. Right away, in the very first season, he won the Hank Aaron Award and the batting title in the American League. That's how good he can get right away. Now, his seasons after the first year didn't quite match that, but still, really good. He's going to be a beast for you right off the bat. 
The next guy we're going to look at seems to be a staple in this video every year, and that's Luis Arise with the Marlins. He's only a 78 overall, even though he should be way higher, and I think that's because his contact ratings max out at 99, even though they're a lot better than everybody else in Major League Baseball, and they really should be closer to like 110. So this is all we're going to have to give up for him, and I think it's worth it for a guy who has 99 contact against both sides of the plate, 99 vision, 99 clutch, and his power actually progresses quite a bit in this game. Here in the first simulation, he jumps up to an 85 overall. The contact ratings are still very high. The power ratings are around 50, but he still hits close to 15 to 20 home runs a year. Now, he's not going to hit 350 like he did in real life on a consistent basis, but he should still hit roughly around 300 and give you a war of at least probably around three and a half every season. In the second simulation, he progressed a little bit higher. Even though he's only an 84 here, I think his numbers were a little bit better. His attributes are around the same, high contact, high plate vision, solid power. But look at this last season, 21 home runs. He still hit around 300. He can develop power in this game, and he's always going to be a good contact bat. And for how easy it is to trade for him, why not? The next player we're going to look at is Geraldo Perdomo, a shortstop with the Diamondbacks. Now, he's going to be pretty hard to get, being that he's 24 years old, he's got eight potential, but I think it's worth it for a switch-hitting shortstop who, again, has great contact numbers and has a lot of room to get better. Now, in this trade, we did not give up anything of value. Eric Feedy, Jesse Chavez, and Martin Maldonado have an average age of about 45 years old between the three of them. And you can get a consistent all-star shortstop in Geraldo Perdomo. In the first simulation, he jumps up to a 92 overall. Good contact ratings. He can hit really anywhere between 15 to 30 home runs a year while hitting around 300. In this last season, he hit 329, OPS close to 900, with a war above 8. His war has been at least 6 in each of the last 3 seasons, which is elite. In the second simulation, he only goes up to a 91 overall, but I think his skill set is a little bit more well-rounded. Better defensive ratings, better power, 98 contact against lefties, although the number against righties is a little bit lower. It took a little while for him to get going, but boy, he got going. 32 home runs, OPS at 941, and a war of 9 in the final season, and he seems to only be getting better and better. He should be consistently good for upwards of a decade for your team. We've already taken a couple players from the Twins today, including their starting second baseman. So now Willie Castro is slated to start there, but not for long, because he's the next player we're going to go over. He's only a 74 overall. One of the lower players we're going to go over today, but he develops into a really good player in MLB The Show Simulation. Now, in the Sims I did, he was behind Edward Julian, so it took him a little while to become a full-time starter. But once he did, he developed very nicely. The ratings don't necessarily jump off the page here, but he's really solid at just about everything. He can play pretty much every position, and his numbers are decent. Now, in this first simulation, he progresses into a pretty solid player, war of around 3.5 to 4 as a full-time starter, but the second simulation is what really caught my attention. 88 overall, really good contact ratings, really good defensive ratings, and again, he seems to only be getting better and better. In his two years as a full-time starter with the Rockies, he made the All-Star team both seasons, wore above five each time, good contact, good power, good enough OPS, all around a really good player for only being a 74 overall. We're going to look at another second baseman here, Nolan Gorman with the Cardinals. He's 23 years old, A potential, 80 overall. So again, naturally, he's going to be one of the harder guys to get in today's episode because, well, he's really good. He doesn't really provide a ton defensively, but as a lefty bat, the dude hits absolute tanks, and he develops into a pretty good contact hitter as well. We're going to have to give up two pretty good pieces here with Mike Soroka and Samuel Zavala, but I think it's worth it for a guy like Nolan Gorman, who can develop into a really, really good player in this game, possibly even an MVP level type of guy. In the first simulation, he would develop into a 90 overall, and I think that he's got a little bit more upside than that. In terms of his stats, really, really good stuff. He hits usually between 25 to 35 home runs a year. He can get up to the 280s and 290s batting average-wise, but I think it might take him a little while to get there. Now, again, defensively, he's not the best. This last season, he had 17 errors. He shouldn't get that much for you, but his defensive ratings are nothing to get all that excited over. In the second simulation, 
He didn't progress as well in terms of his ratings. He already seems to be getting worse, but his numbers are really good. Multiple seasons above 30 home runs, even one year with 41 homers. His OPS is usually between, I would say, 830 and 950, which is really good. You are getting an awesome bat to the lineup with the addition of Nolan Gorman. The next player we're going to look at is Riley Green with the Tigers, now moving into the outfield. Riley Green is only a 75 overall. MLB The Show did him dirty, but they made up for him because he is cracked in franchise mode and he develops really well. You're going to have to give up a bit to get him, being that he's a potential, he's only 23 years old, but not as much as you'd realistically think. In the two simulations I did, he develops into a monster. He becomes one of the best contact hitters in the entire game, and he hits for good power. Between 25 and 30 home runs in each of the last three seasons here, while consistently hitting around 300 or so, in this first simulation, I went even farther and went through his entire career. He ended up finishing with around 2,900 hits, had multiple seasons with above 40 home runs, and obviously was a Hall of Famer, consistently with wars above five. In the second simulation, again, really good. He's a 92 overall. 97 contact against righties. 99 against lefties. And the power numbers are nothing to scoff at. His stats per season are a little bit worse than the first simulation, but he seems to be progressing a little bit better. And as a Tiger fan, if this is what Riley Green's career would look like, I would be tickled pink. Minus the fact that he was traded to the Guardians in the first season, I think I would be really happy with that, which says something because Riley Green's a guy in real life who should become a star. Spencer Steer with the Reds is the next guy we're going to look at. Mashes lefties. He can play everywhere in the infield along with left, and he's got A potential. Now again, with him having A, you're going to have to give up a little bit. Garrett Crochet's a nice piece, but he's really the only big asset we had to move here, and I think it's worth it for a guy like Spencer Steer, who's got plenty of time and team control left. There are not many guys in this game who hit lefties better than him, and he still should easily improve against righties as well. In the first simulation, here he is as an 87 overall, and he should still be getting better. You're going to have him for a full five seasons of team control. The numbers here are solid. You should expect around 270 to 280 average-wise. Now, he didn't hit for the power that you would hope for here, but I think in the second simulation, he develops quite a bit better. 94 overall, 98 contact against lefties, 99 power against lefties. In this last season, he went deep 37 times. He hit 27 homers in each of the last four seasons. His war is a lot higher. This is certainly more of a ceiling for Spencer Steer, who develops into a monster in this game. The last player we're going to go over today is Leody Tavares, the center fielder of the Texas Rangers. The offensive numbers are not going to overwhelm you, but he plays really good defense. He's fast, and he progresses well enough offensively to where he's one of the better center fielders in the game. Now, you're going to have to keep in mind the Rangers are not in a good spot budget-wise. So you have to be a little bit careful with what you trade them. I made a separate trade with them prior to get one of their bad contracts off the books to show you how easy it is here to trade for him once they actually have enough money. In the first simulation, Tavares developed into a really strong player. 88 overall. His defensive numbers are really good. His offensive stats aren't like crazy or anything. He's not going to consistently hit above 330 homers. But as you can see with his war, he's just as valuable, if not more, than some of the other guys we've gone over today because of his defensive ability in center field and because of his speed. In the second simulation, again, 88 overall. The offensive numbers are pretty good for the most part. Over 20 home runs in each of the last three seasons while hitting for solid average and an OPS around 800. That's a win for a guy who produces the way he does in center field. Not to mention he's a switch hitter, which is also pretty exciting as well. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. Those are 10 position players who you should trade for in your MLB The Show franchises. Our contact rating is 4th and our power rating is ninth, which kind of goes to show you the team that we've built here while keeping all of the White Sox big and important assets. That's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new for more MLB The Show 24 franchise content. Peace out.